Warning. The following video contains hella math and is intended only for those who are not completely f***ing ignorant. Please do not attempt any of the calculations in this video unsupervised or your brain may spontaneously combust. Viewer discretion is not advised. What is up guys? This is Trendkill. And by now, all of you Respawn Army app members or Call of Duty Elite beta testers have surely seen Xbox Ahoy's gun review videos, where he kind of goes over a little bit of history of the gun, the shots it takes to kill somebody with that gun, uh, maybe some uh, perk options you may want to use with the specific gun he's talking about. Uh, if you haven't seen them, go check them out. They are really good videos. They're very informational. Uh, you may have also seen Raging Amish's videos. Raging Amish does a little bit more... Um, opinionated reviews. He uses more raw statistics. He adds a little humor. Talks about attachments and how the guns relate in zombies mode. Also, definitely worth uh, a view if you want to go check his videos out as well. But while both of those guys are very good at what they do, and I don't want to take away anything from either of them because they both make very good content, when I watch a review of a single gun, I always feel like I'm missing something. I love to know the stats and the recoil table and, you know, maybe some class ideas that you think I should run with that gun. But more importantly, I want to know how that specific gun compares to the other guns in its class. That's where I come in. Now, because I'm lazy, before I did anything, I scoured the internet looking for a system that was already in place. Unfortunately, I didn't find any. I found one guy who was trying to do it but he was weighting everything equally, so the damage of the gun was equal to the reload time of the gun in, as far as the, the point system was concerned, and that didn't make any sense to me. So what I've done is I've created my own scale that rates each gun against the other guns in its category, in its class, so assault rifles against assault rifles, SMGs against SMGs, and I've used six statistics those six stats are time to kill, which takes into account the damage and the rate of fire of a weapon, recoil, which I've separated into two subcategories, dependability and net force, add time, which is the reload time of a weapon, mag size, which should be pretty obvious, uh, and raise and drop times, which are the switch times of the weapons. Now, as we all very well know, all statistics are not created equal, uh, and time to kill is generally regarded as the most important stat to look at when you're trying to pick which gun you're going to use. And I guess rightfully so, because it's the stat that's going to decide how fast you're actually going to kill somebody. So it's been scored as such. Each stat has been given its own weighted possible score. All of those scores add up to a total possible gun score of 115 points. Obviously, the higher the score given to that statistic, the more important I find that stat to be. Now, most of you probably already know what time to kill is, but for those of you who don't, time to kill is how long it takes a gun to kill somebody. And you can calculate that by first figuring out how many shots it takes to kill somebody, and then multiplying that number of shots minus one times your fire rate. So, every player in Call of Duty has 100 hit points, assuming they've taken no damage, obviously. So, if your gun does 40 damage per bullet, you can obviously do the quick math and see that 3 bullets equals 120 damage, which would obviously kill somebody. If you guys need me to explain time to kill any further, let me know, um, but I just wanted to make sure you understood how that worked. Now, as far as recoil is concerned, I want to make sure I take some time to go over this because you're going to be looking at two stats that you've probably never seen before. Uh, one of which is net force, and this is just a simple physics calculation. Uh, but net force I've defined as the estimated amount a gun's going to kick in a given direction. Now, the one problem with this stat is, is that the gun has a random chance of kicking up, down, left, or right. And the numbers assigned to up, down, left, or right decide how much it's going to kick in that direction. So it's not a 100% accurate stat because it's not like all four forces are pulling in the opposite directions of each other at all times. It's random. So this was not given a lot of points on the weighting scale simply because of the fact that it's not 100% accurate. But it at least gives you a very good idea as to which direction the gun is going to kick and by how much. Now the last stat that I want to talk about is dependability, and I want to talk about this one a little more in depth because it's another one of those stats that I had to come up with specifically to bring multiple stats into a single value so that I could rank them against each other. And what dependability is defined as is how likely a gun is to kick in a given direction. 
And what that means is, is if you've got a gun that could... It's obviously, we're, we know they're going to kick in random directions, up, down, left, or right. If your values on your recoil table are 60 left, 60 up, 60 right, and 60 down, that means you've got a random chance of kicking any direction to a degree of 60, whichever, whatever that number means. So if you've got a gun like the FAMAS that's only got a 10 left and a 20 down, but a 60 up and a 60 right, that means that gun is more dependably going to kick up and to the right. Now, the other two factors that are figured into dependability are center speed and fire rate. And center speed is obviously going to affect the dependability score of a gun in a positive way because center speed, the higher the center speed, the faster your gun's going to correct itself. Fire rate, on the other hand, is going to affect the dependability score in a negative way because the faster your gun fires, the more recoil it's ultimately going to have. Now, for any of you math nerds out there that want to know a little bit more about the formulas and why I chose to use those formulas, obviously send me, a, send me a message, leave me a comment, and I'll try to explain myself as best as I can. But I'm not going to go into that into a video because for every one math nerd, there's 200 people that could give a shit less about how I calculated this stuff. Um, I can assure you for the people that don't care about the calculations that I spent hours on end trying to come up with the perfect formulas and the perfect way to do this, this scoring system so that it was fair and accurate and I would have never released a video if I didn't think that it was as good as it was going to get. Now, one more thing before we get into the scores, I'm only rating the six fully automatic assault rifles against each other. It's very, very hard to compare a fully, a fully automatic assault rifle to a semi-automatic to a three-round burst because there's just so many factors involved and I just figured it would be best to rate fully automatics against each other and then rate the others against each other at a later time. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into the stats. Uh, the first stat we're going to look at is obviously the most important stat, time to kill. It's got the highest weight, so we might as well get this one out of the way first. Um, if you look at the, uh, the AUG, the top line there, the first number, 0.13, is the time to kill up close, before the weapon's damage actually starts to drop off. Um, if you look at the second number, that's the time to kill from distance, when the gun's doing its minimum damage. So, uh, you can see the AUG and the FAMAS score a perfect 40, and that's simply because their fire rate's much higher than the other guns. And I don't want to say much higher, but it's 25% higher, so that means that gun's going to kill essentially 25% faster. Uh, you know, the, the difference from long distance between 0.24 seconds and 0.19 seconds could be the difference between life and death. So that's why the Augen from Oz score a perfect 40 and the others score 20% less than them. Now, the next stat we're going to be looking at is dependability, which is one of the subcategories of recoil. And two things I want you to notice when we're looking at this. The top three guns, the Enfield, Galil, and FAMAS, all have the exact same recoil table. The arrow points up and to the right, meaning on average they're going to shoot up and to the right. The bottom three guns, Commando, AK-47, and AUG, also share the same recoil table, and on average, they're going to shoot straight up. Now, the second thing I want you guys to notice is that the FAMAS and the AUG, even though they have the exact same recoil table as the guns above them, score worse on dependability because they have a higher fire rate. So what that means is that even though they're going to kick in the same direction, they have more chances of kicking in different directions because they're firing more bullets in the same amount of time. So you can see that the infield and the Galil score the highest on dependability at a perfect 20 points. And the AUG scores the worst, and that's just because it's got more chances to kick in more directions, and that's coupled with a high fire rate, so it's not a very dependable gun. Now, net force is the polar opposite of dependability, and I say that because the dependability of a gun is going to predict which direction it's going to kick. And the better the predictability or the dependability of a gun, the more often it's going to go in that exact direction. But you don't know how much it's going to kick in that direction. And that's kind of where net force comes into play. And I say kind of because, as I said before, it's not 100% accurate. A, a net force calculation or equation is assuming that all forces that are affecting an object are pulling at the same time. We know, based on the stats of the guns and the way that the game was made, that every time you fire a bullet, the gun is going to kick in a random direction. So there is no calculation for randomness, but this at least gives us some kind of closely accurate, or at least accurate enough, description of which direction a gun's going to go and by how much. So the only real information that you can pull from the net force picture here is that the AK-47, AUG, and Commando, while they were the least dependable, they also have the least net force. Meaning that even though you're not exactly sure which direction they're going to kick, on average they're going to kick 
less or you're going to notice it less than the infield FAMAS and Galil that are going to kick up and to the right. Now these next few stats I'm going to go through pretty quickly here. So if you want to take some more time to look at them, just pause the video. Um, as far as reload times or add times are concerned, you can see that the Commando has the fastest reload time versus the Galil. And I mean, there's a pretty big difference there. There's a, you know, 0.7 seconds basically, 0.65 seconds between the reload times. That's, when you're over a half second, that's pretty noticeable. Uh, so you can see the Commando's the fastest, the Galil's the uh, slowest. Now, as far as mag size is concerned, on assault rifles, there's not much of a difference between the size of the magazines. The Galil has 35 bullets per mag, and the rest of the guns all have 30. Uh, mag size is going to be a little more important when we get into the, uh, the SMG scores a little later, but for now, uh, basically everything's the same. And last but not least, we've got the, or I guess more accurately, last and least, we've got the raise and drop times. Uh, looking at the AUG, for example, if you look at 0.75, that's the raise time, 0.65 being the drop time. For you pistol users out there, the drop times are irrelevant because your switch time is automatically 0.25 seconds for dropping your weapon and pulling out the pistol. Um, and like I said, this is not all that important as far as the stat's concerned. It's not even given 10% of the full total uh, weight of the score. So for you AK-47 users out there, fret not. And finally, what you guys have all been waiting for, or at least what I've been waiting to show you, is the total score list. Uh, I, I don't think you're going to see anything that completely blows your mind. The one thing that kind of surprised me was that the infield actually scored above the AK and the Galil as an all-around gun. And you get that at, what, level 5, something like that? And it's actually got a slighter, slightly faster ADS time, which isn't even scored. Uh, so, you know, it may rate higher than that. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, the FAMAS and AUG, obviously, sometimes people call it the FAMAUG, they're so closely related, um, have uh, very similar scores, and the FAMAS has been nerfed back in June, so the AUG and the Commando are probably above the FAMAS, I would, I would expect now. And that's about it, guys. Um, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you can use the scoring system to help pick your next gun, or when Modern Warfare 3 comes out, I think this system is really going to give us an accurate idea as to which guns are going to be the most overused guns. And uh, hopefully you guys come back to watch the submachine guns and the shotgun uh, scores. Uh, I've already got the stats all done, so all I've got to do is put the videos together. Probably release one a week, something like that. And uh, as always, I really appreciate you guys stopping by and spending some time with me. And uh, like I said, hope you come back for the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.